Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Nanomix's channel, Mobile Diagnostics Without Compromising, Expanding Access to Quality Healthcare. Joining us, we have the pleasure to be joined by David, who was the Chief Executive Officer, but is passing the rein down to Thomas. And we're going to get an introduction to exactly what's going on with this transition. So first and foremost, welcome, uh, David. Hey, Kyle. Thanks. Uh, really good to, to, to be with you today. I'm excited to uh, to introduce you and, and the audience to Thomas Schlumberger. Thomas is our new CEO. He and I have been working together actually for, oh, I would say maybe almost two months on various different pieces of uh, business related to nanomics. I am not disappearing. Uh, I am uh, an advisor to the company. I'm doing transition with Thomas and I will remain on the board of directors. As a significant shareholder, I can tell you I'm excited about what Thomas brings to the table, and I continue to be very excited about the uh, the future here of uh, Nanomics. So uh, Thomas has now been in the chair for about three weeks, and I'm sure he knows 100% of everything that, uh, that Nanomics is doing. Now, Thomas, just pivoting over here, do you want to kind of just give us um, some idea on the history leading up to what got you involved with the uh, Nanomix here? Um, so I, I, I try to keep it short, but uh, I, I grew up in Germany and France, did an engineering uh, education and worked at BMW for three years and then somehow really, really wanted to get into biology. Uh, went to UC Berkeley, received my PhD in molecular and cell biology with distinction then spend about three years at McKinsey and then went to biotech. And uh, a lot of my time in biotech has been really spent on point of care. And I think I understand that space pretty well um, in terms of the requirement. Um, probably the most prominent station I had in point of care was a company called Epocal. They made a point of care blood gas device with uh, uh, electrolytes and metabolites. You need that at the ICU to manage critically ill patients. And um, back then, that was about 10, 12 years ago, you still had to fight with, with uh, uh, the doctors and the central lab that they all doubted that your point of care platform can be as accurate uh, uh, as, the, as the central lab, right? And that is a very, very important point. Now, 10 years have passed by, more point of care solutions came on the market and today you don't need to lead that battle anymore. Actually, emergency doctors like point of care. They wanna have it in the, in the emergency department to be able to really uh, very, very quickly do a diagnosis, know what to do with the patient uh, and then um, uh, uh, start the, the respective therapy, so to speak. What attracted me to Nanomics? Um, I mean, when I first came across Nanomics and I looked at the platform, I was literally blown away. Um, to my to my assessment, and and obviously now that I'm CEO of Nanomics, I'm somewhat biased, but uh, I would I would certainly make the statement that the Nanomics eLab platform is the best point of care platform uh, that there is on the market right now, um, and that comes from the the high sensitivity, high high specificity, high accuracy, uh, uh, and 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 on on top of that, a very short turnaround time of twelve minutes. And what I like very very much is also the ro robustness of the device. You, uh, I mean, uh, David had told me when he got the first device, and they told him, "Don't drop it, don't drop it, don't drop it." And of course, <laughs> it dropped. And David just picked it up and put in the cartridge, and it worked like a charm. And this is a very important characteristic when you think how point of care will meander out from the very traditional emergency department ICU, that it can meander out into, you know, helicopters, ambulances, urgent care centers, practically the first line of defense. When uh, somebody comes and has, and, and for our first application, we choose uh, a sepsis uh, slash critical infection panel that will um, uh, help very, very quickly identify whether you're a sepsis patient or not. And now, now think about that. Uh, a, a, a patient comes to the urgent care, has high fever, just doesn't feel well. Uh, they don't really know what to do. Now, in order to rule it out or rule it in, you run our test 12 minutes, bingo, you got there. The same when, 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 when somebody is picked up, when somebody collapses, is picked up by a helicopter, you can have that device on the helicopter and you can make the diagnosis so they're already prepared in the ED when the patient comes. So I kind of see a lot of potential for that uh, 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 point of care platform being deployed. 
and uh, uh, go into uh, 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 very different markets. Obviously, we are a smaller public company, so we choose the first entree carefully. It is, in all likelihood, emergency department and ICU. Um, but uh, uh, what I'm also excited about is that this platform is very versatile. I mean, we have also developed a very high-grade COVID-19 antibody test with uh, a very high sensitivity, very high specificity. We are um, currently looking for a non-traditional way to commercialize that through a CLIA lab partner who would validate the test, uh, do an EUA, an emergency use application to the FDA, and then sell the, the, the lab through the, uh, their CLIA labs, which by the way are in trucks, they're mobile. So it's a, a very innovative concept. And uh, the point that I wanted to make here is when you think about, on one hand, the sepsis critical infection application, and on the other hand, the COVID-19 antibody application, they are as far on the spectrum of tests as you can imagine. And that just speaks to the versatility of our platform that you can practically do so, so many different things. We're currently defining the, the next generation products. It will take us a little bit, probably four, four to eight weeks. And then we have that, that lockdown, but uh, we're just very, very excited about the platform itself and all the different applications that you can run on it. On that note, Thomas, I think you offered uh, an incredible amount of clarity here, and I can see the passion uh, behind this business and expanding it moving forward. So when we come back, uh, we'll get Thomas on and we'll be talking about some of the news releases. And if you want to catch those news releases, consider subscribing to the channel. And we'd love to know what you guys think about all of us in that comment section below as well. But on that note, stay cool, stay awesome. And as always, we look forward to catching you in the next one. Mm -hmm.